It's a sunny weekday morning here in New Zealand, and I'm very happy to bring you the first of our Patreon entrants here to the 2019 Orchestration Challenge using Mussorgsky's The Seamstress as our material. And I really love this first entry here. <laughs> um, I really like the way Enrique changes the harmonic context, which is something I haven't seen yet in the scores that I have evaluated so far. So this piece is in D flat major. So if the D flat had been emphasized, nobody would have raised an eyebrow, but instead we're seeing the B flat emphasized, which brings a relative minor connotation right and um, it turns the um, turns these little alternating notes B flat and a flat uh, suggesting aeolian mode right so natural minor without the um, without the leading tone of a natural going up to B flat and then adding the other elements of the pattern then, you know, and, and then here, uh, emphasizing the dominant of the B minor context with, you know, these, uh, these lovely little bits of motion in here, I think is just really, really innovative. Now, Enrique, it would have been a lot simpler just to notate these values here as dotted quarter notes. Right, so this would be dotted quarter note, dotted quarter note, and then this just could be a quarter note, right? You don't need to have a tied eighth, and then this could just be an eighth, right? Because this is nine eight, right? So it's just much easier to read. See, like right here, that's this right here. Now maybe you were taking this from a um, from a MIDI file, and so the MIDI file, the MIDI uh, uh, transfer over to your notation software caused some kind of, um, you know, some kind of unnecessary ties and so on. I've seen that before. Okay, but it's really cool the way that you emphasize that F below. And then you've got this lovely unison here of uh, clarinets, harp, and strings, or violins. And then the flutes join in right there and continue to do so later on. Nice the way that you reserve that higher tonality till later in the bars. So it's it's all very effective, very delicate scoring. Um, there are a few things to think about, however. One is, like, just how fast do you want these bow strokes? Now, you probably notice in my, in my interpretation, I had my players uh, playing at uh, 92, and it, it's pretty close to yours. Now notice that you have got quarter note equals 102. So you really want to have dotted quarter note. We want to know what the dotted, the dotted quarter note equals, because nobody is going to be counting these first four uh, 16th notes, and then the next four 16th notes, right? That's not where the beat is. The beat is on the dotted quarter note, right? Just like these guys, right? So that's that is what people are going to want to know is the tempo. So just like just figure out what that is. It's actually slower than my original um, suggestion of ninety-two. So um, yeah, so I was just thinking like dotted. What would that work out with? Like something more like maybe seventy-two or seventy-six or something like that would be the equivalent of this um, to the dotted quarter note. Um, Something like that. So, uh, anyways, to go back to our original point, the whole question is, how fast can this be played um, with single bow strokes? Now, at the tempo you're going, it's not a big deal, right? But, you know, here we're getting into just really kind of constant articulations with the flute, and while that's all possible, it's not really all that elegant. Do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's you know, it's fine, but here you got mezzo piano, right? So I, I assume that you are trying, you're attempting some kind of blending here, right? If the, if you've got 
all 30 violin players, you know, 15, say, uh, 16 uh, firsts and 14 seconds, then you want to um, balance this by having this a little bit louder. But it's still, you know, it is in a weaker register for the flute. So it's still going to be a little, <clears throat> you know, a little bit problematic. I mean, clarinet right here would have been a much easier sell, right? And until you get to about like D right here, then the blend will be almost imperceptible. It'll be like almost as if the flute doesn't exist and isn't contributing anything at all, right? Because it's just so soft. The other thing too, and um, you know, as you saw in my lecture of my own arrangement, this is something that you know the best com composer or the best orchestrator can occasionally forget to do. You have to indicate how many on a single note, right? So right here, you'd have to say, uh, this is first flute or a uh, two, right? Um, and over here, you also have to uh, um, indicate how many players on each part, right? On each staff. So this would actually be two flutes, right? This could just be a single oboe, right? So you just leave it as oboe, but this is two clarinets in B flat, right? Okay. And then I didn't see the bass clarinet get used then I think the bassoon goes on in the next page, um, pretty much doubling the cellos at first, kind of making their part a little firmer, which is actually really good in this context. But once again, how many per part? Is that one? Is that first bassoon? Is it a two bassoons? Is there just only one bassoon here? Right. See that. So you can see how that could lead to confusion. And I don't think you used brass at all. So like. Um, on a laptop screen, this is going to be very small note heads and hard to read, right? Even though you did double up parts on staves, which is good, you know, like two, two parts on a single stave, a single staff. But still, like, you know, if you have instruments that you don't need in a situation like this, just, just omit them. Do you know what I mean? Just get rid of them. And then you can make the, um, the the writing all that much bigger and easier to read for the audience, right? So the harp writing is pretty good. I mean, this is all doable. There's nothing here that is, is you know, I mean, I mean, there's probably more you could do in terms of filigree and so on, but I would say probably mark the harp mezzo forte, really. It's you know, you're, you're going to need, maybe maybe mezzo piano is enough here, but once you get to here, it's going to need to be louder, right? Just because of your, you're bringing in more and more string players and you're making the texture more and more complex. Not all that much more complex, but still. I like the addition of the bassoon. I like the motion in the, in the bass. I like the fact that this is, um, you know, is harmony that is different from... Uh, from the, the, the actual original arrangement. Looking at the next page, it's, you know, it's, it's a pretty cool continuation and, you know, it's good to have the, have a, uh, an alternate tone color in there, brought, bringing in the bass clarinet. Do you notice how much more the bass clarinet speaks out there? Then you've got a doubling here with the oboe, which is going to be very, um, a very pungent effect. And you can hear when you jump up here to this A, it's really rings out because you didn't double it. Maybe you intended to have the firsts play that high A natural, right? Um, would have been nice if there was something to accentuate or, or stress these, um, this, these higher notes in a percussive way, right? Whether it would have been maybe pizzicato, divisi, or harp, or which is something I did, or like maybe I don't know, snare drum, or 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 wood block, or just anything kind of thing would have made this a little punchier, right? So, but otherwise, it's it's a really cool arrangement, and it's you know makes me makes me wish that you had continued on to the very end of the first thirteen bars that I assigned for the minimum level. So anyways, but it's just still really great. And thank you so much, Enrique, for sharing this with us. And it's a really great start to this whole series 
of Patreon evaluations. 